Hello internet, I'm Udo ADHD. Welcome back to my channel where I talk about whatever I want unedited. So if you vibe, subscribe and make sure you leave a comment so we can welcome you to the tribe. We have been so into these financial psychological videos by Ramit Sethi. He has this book, it's literally called, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. And I'm really loving these videos where he talks to couples and helps them figure out their financial situations. And I also have my hubby here. Hello. Off camera. And today is actually our first anniversary, our first marriage anniversary. I don't know what color, like I think the different anniversaries are related to different rubies or something. But anyway. So cute, so sweet. So anyway, <laughs> let's see if we can uh, put our marriage knowledge to the test and see what we think of how Ramit helps these people. So I'm going to push play. And this is like our first time reaction. Neither of us have seen this yet. Also, um, leave comments. Like as you're watching, go ahead and spam the comment section because I love it. I love it. I love commenting as, I mean, that's what I'm doing, but with the mic, I love commenting as I'm watching, you know? Okay. I've got $22,000 in credit card debt and I'm maxed out on all of them. Oh, currently. are you paying it off? Uh, no, I'm just paying minimums, 1300. And do you know the interest rate on your loan? Like 26 and a half, all, all my, yep, yep, yep. 26%? 26 yeah. That's what Melody said, too, when I told her. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it's horrible. It's hard to put into words. It feels suffocating. Why are you uh, already it's laughing? It's all I think about, but uh, <laughs> I, I, it's, it, it's suffocating. Yes. If you are now making more money than you've ever made before, why is the debt still growing? Because I'm spending the money. Well, here's the deal with my money. I either have $50 or I have $5,000. Okay, her face. And that's how it is for me. I've chosen him as my life partner, even knowing that. That feels different when you're 25 than when you're 35 than when you're almost 40. A few weeks ago, mm -hmm. I was holding a money coaching session. And I got a question from one of our students. I'd like to actually play the clip for you. Next question, Melody. Melody says, what do you do if your partner is self-employed but overwhelmed not booking work, has over $20,000 in credit card debt, and not open to money talk until he's out of debt. But he has no plan for when that will be because we have time and he's happy with where he's at and uh -huh. you pay for everything. Um, <laughs> Let's just let the chat room speak. <laughs> let's face see what some speak. folks say. His face spoke. <laughs> First of all, everyone's like, go on the podcast. Definitely come on the podcast. That will allow us to get into more detail. And today, I get the chance to introduce you, you to mind. Melody and David. They live on a large piece of land in Texas, and technically things should be going great since all of their expenses are covered by multiple tenants that they okay. have. Unfortunately, they see money very differently. Melody wants stability. She wants a plan. David has a much more complicated history with money. He's never had a lot of money, and earlier in life, he decided to abandon the idea of ever making it. Now, it's really starting to cause conflict. As you listen to today's episode, I want you to ask yourself, how do you talk about money if you're living together? spending together, but you see money completely differently. I'd like to encourage you to find this episode either on audio or on video at YouTube. Oh yeah, I just wanted to pause because that's like, that's crazy to have completely opposite views of money. You know, like most couples, it's like, oh, I like to save, I like to spend, but like overall you have similar goals financially and that is part of what makes you compatible but to have just literally completely different mind maps about finances um i don't know <laughs> it was bad you can just search for my name ramit sethi make sure you follow me there and you can watch the body language and the facial expressions as we go through today's episode my name is ramit sethi this is i will teach you to be rich David and I have been together for 16 years and we have made some really big steps forward. David 
feels like we've talked about money a lot this year and I feel like we've barely cracked the surface. Mm. I hold a lot back in the conversation and some of that is because I don't think I know how or have the tools to talk about money productively, especially given that we're in different positions. You know, we talk about, you know, to use your phrase, our rich life a lot, but I don't think that we talk about how we're going to get there. And that makes me really anxious because it's cool to talk about renovating our house or building the dream that we have for our property. Right now, I feel like if I don't pay for it, it's not going to happen. And okay. so that feels really limiting to me. Okay. You nervous saying that out yeah. loud? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You wrote me a question in the Money Coaching Group. Are you okay if I read the question off that you asked me? Yeah, it was. Um, I haven't read it to David, and I was feeling really alone and isolated and um, unguarded in my words. Just uh oh, to say that. Let's okay. see, David. Are you okay if I read this question that she asked me earlier? Oh, it's the same question we heard. If it's a real question today, just as it was when you wrote it, then I don't have a problem with it. Okay. Melody, what does that mean? Yeah, I mean, I think that there's parts of it that came out of frustration, but the the, the theme of it is really, um, I think, the root of how I feel sometimes. I'm okay with it. Here's the question. Melody asked, what do you do if your partner is self-employed, but overwhelmed and not booking work, over $20,000 in credit card debt, and not open to money talk until he's out of debt, but has no plan for when that will be because, quote, we have time and he's happy with where he's at and you pay for everything. Melody doesn't pay for everything, y'all. Not even close. Okay, let's stipulate okay. that Melody does not pay for everything. I can see it in the conscious spending plan. He David, is you so certainly pay stiff. for this. want to make sure that we're accurate about that. Putting that point aside, that's a pretty direct language. I've heard all of those. I, I made some of those statements and have heard those questions from Elodie. Mm -hmm. And? But she asked you the question, so. Melody, when you wrote that question, what was going through your head? I don't know how to make this change. How long have you felt that way? As long as, I mean, you know, I think David's always been David and he's always felt the way that he's felt about money. And I've chosen him as my life partner, even knowing that. But I think as, you know, that feels different when you're 25 than when you're 35 than when you're almost 40. For sure. And I see how hard we both work and how hard we physically work and both of our parents, like all of our parents are retiring and, you know, I think the urgency shifts. So there's always been themes of that for me. We've, we've never aligned on money, um, but it's becoming more and more relevant that we start to find some alignment because I feel like our opportunity of creating this life is passing. David, when you think about the word money, what words come to mind for you? Oh, he changed locations. Um, melody and freedom and debt. Mm -hmm. Why those three? Well, because me and Melody have been talking a lot about money in the last year. Um, freedom, because I have a, a newfound love for money. I want to make more. I want to have more. And debt, because I think about debt every hour of every waking moment really? right now. Is that true? Why don't it you is pay true. it? Why? Because I've got $22,000 in credit card debt and I'm maxed out on all of them. Mm. It's hard to put into words. It feels suffocating. Uh, it's not all I think about, but uh, I, I, it's, it, it's suffocating. It's... Mm. How long have you had it? I've been between fifteen and twenty-two thousand dollars in debt for three years. Uh, Melody, when you think of the word money, what words come to mind for you? Um, 
a responsibility, sacrifice, and fun. <laughs> fun. Tell me more about that one. I grew up in a home that was really restricted because of the money we didn't have. And it also plays into my parents' story. And that's really scary for me. Do you mind sharing their story? Um, my parents had a business together, but he never paid the taxes. And when they split up, he left the state and my mom was burdened with all of that. It dictated everything. Like we could only rent um, because she couldn't, you know, get a loan because her credit was totally trashed. She worked on uh, she cleaned houses. And a lot of the reason why is because she could work for cash and her income wouldn't be um, deducted. Pretty serious stuff that shaped the way that I grew up and the things that we had access to. And so I see that money allows you access to experience. It allows you access mm -hmm. to the life, like a, a life that you want to live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the other two words that you said, tell me about those. You have to be responsible and sometimes make sacrifices in order to have those things and money. And why are we talking now? Because I know that can't make David feel very good. And I don't want to be like, I don't want to contribute to, you know, his feeling about where he is. I know that he works really hard and he has the best intentions and he wants to give me and our life everything. Um, but I just feel like right now, we don't have the right tools. I wonder what that means. What he used to do that for us. She keeps uh, David, that. when you hear Melody talking about money like that, and his face is so how does it like... strike you? I I hear her, and I agree with her. I, I get defensive <laughs> right off the bat. Um, yeah, he but, even got defensive uh, yeah. when Ramit read the question, and he was like. She doesn't pay for everything. <laughs> like, something's there. You know, I agree with her that 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 money will help us, our dreams come true. Um, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm. I don't know. Does either, it hurt bro. to hear some of the things she said? No, it didn't hurt. It didn't okay. hurt because at all. That's interesting, isn't it, Melody? It almost felt like you were tiptoeing, kind of walking on eggshells, and. If David is to be believed, which I do, he says, ah, didn't hurt me. What do you think about that, Melody? Mm, I'd ask, did it not hurt because of the rationalization of why it's functioning that way? Like right now, kind of our agreement is that um, I buy the goods, David builds what we need. And, and in some ways that works, but I think in, in the larger things that we have planned for the future, it's not it's not going to. There are lots of clues, even in their introductions. Before I tell you which clues jumped out to me, hit pause and try to think about which three clues you caught. Go ahead. Okay. What clues? I don't know what clues he's talking about. Mm, maybe about like what the problem is. Well, the first clue I got is the wife keeps saying that they don't have the right tools. What does that mean? Like, I don't know. When, when somebody says that, it just makes me think there's something they actually want to say and you're not saying it. And then my second clue is the dude's reaction to the question. And just in general, he's just so like, I don't know, like he is disassociated from this money thing. He's just completely just not there. And then I don't know what the third clue is. I don't know what the third clue is. I mean, I don't know. I don't know the third clue. And you're just like, what are the clues for? <laughs> All right, welcome back. Here are my three clues that jumped out to me. First, David says he thinks about debt every single day. Melody feels she has to tiptoe around David's feelings, including the fact that she said, you feel different at 25, then 35, then 40. And there's something about their earnings differences. Those are the ones that jumped out to me. How would you get to the bottom of their situation? If you were sitting in my chair, 
what would your next question be? I want you to really pause and think about it before we go on. What would your next question be? Like, what actually is the problem? I still don't know what the problem is they're having. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would... I would ask Melanie, I think that's her name, what do you want... I, I, would, I would actually ask the husband first, what do you want... What do you think the problem is? And then I would ask Melanie, what do you want? That Those would be my next questions. Because if you're listening or you're watching this on YouTube, this is really an opportunity for you to hone your own skills. And you can use your skills hypothetically with some of the guests that I have here on the show. And then, of course, I want you to make sure you can take these skills and transfer them to your own relationship. Ultimately, I want you to get better with money in your relationship. All right, here we go. Take me back through the last year. Why did money start coming up now? And what's the tenor of the type of conversations that you both have about it? I started my, my own business uh, a couple of years ago. Um, what kind carpentry. of business? Ah, cool. Carpentry, uh, building furniture, uh, building mostly decks and outdoor structures, and then uh, furniture as well. Tables is that what the wood behind you is for? It is. I'm in my shop. This is a very <laughs> unique background. For most of the people I've talked to, they've got like a clock. This is cool. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad you like it. This hurts to say, but I was actually at about fifteen and a half thousand dollars in debt at the beginning of the year, and I decided to um, get a loan to help have only one payment. I, I, I got I was getting all these advertisements, and I was reading them and going through them and doing research, and I thought this sounds pretty good. I got the loan, and I have proceeded to just even though I'm more than halfway paid off of that loan, my debt went right back up. And that it just pains me every time I look at my credit report or, or what I owe to know that even though the opportunity wasn't the best in the first place, that I, I really did kind of waste, of a, waste an opportunity. What's your current approach to getting rid of the debt? Um, I don't have one. Oh, currently. are you paying it off? No, he's not doing anything. Uh, no, I'm just paying minimums. Ah, how much is that minimum every month? Um... 1300 Okay. And do you know the interest rate on your loan? They've, they've, uh, uh, on the loan, it's um, like 26 and a half. Why are you making that face? 1300 is the minimum? What kind of loan did you get, bro? <laughs> 20000 of credit card that does not equate to 1300 a month in minimums. That's it. <laughs> Your face, and he's about to say it's like twenty six percent. All my yep, yep. Twenty six percent. Yeah, that's what Melody said too when I told her. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, aside from my reaction, <laughs> what what does twenty six percent mean to you? Okay, that was a mistake. But <laughs> he was like, "Oh, sorry." Uh. And what does that mean for you? <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> oh, okay. I just couldn't contain myself. Now, the problem with my reaction is you can tell I'm shocked, but most people don't actually understand what that number even means. It's like me sitting here saying, oh my dear God, your car has 206 picometers of mold in it. You're like, oh my God, that sounds really bad. But also what the hell is a picometer? I don't even know what a picometer is. I just made that up. Here's a quick way to think about it, okay? If we assume you can get a 7% return on your investments, which means your money doubles roughly every 10 years, can you guess what that means if you actually owe money to a credit card at 26% interest? That's right. It means your debt doubles incredibly fast. So paying the minimum essentially means you're going to be paying it forever. Yes. That is why I lost my composure, which, again, was not good. And I apologize to David. And also, so, how is it 1300 like I, I can see why he is just like, what am I gonna do? Because <laughs> the minimum itself is so big. I don't know what the hell he did, bro. <laughs> Let me now ask David what he understands about that number. What What does twenty six percent mean to you? Oh, wow. Uh, Look at that body language. You know, I don't know. Yeah. If not for my uh, facial 
horror. <laughs> like, would you have known is 26 good or bad? No. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. That's honest. I appreciate the candor. Melody, when you hear David say that he's got this debt that he thinks about every day, but he doesn't have a plan to pay it off. How does that make you feel? I just want to fix it. Mm. Um, <sighs> can, can you can you give me that again, She's though? Because so I'm curious. Ready. I know what you want to do. I, I know that's why you set up this call, but I want to know how it makes you feel. Uh, yeah, feelings. Um, I'm really good at the action part. Feelings are where it gets a little tricky. Um, I... It makes me feel really um, sad for him. I didn't, I don't think that I really realized that he thinks about it that much. I know how I feel. You know, um, I have about 5,000 on credit cards, but at one point I had 10 and I wasn't making as much as I'm making now. And it felt terrible. And I hate that he feels that way. Um, but it also makes me feel pretty panicked. I know he doesn't have a plan and I don't know how, I don't know how it's going to change with that one. Who brings up money when the two of you talk about it? We don't talk about it. I don't ever bring up money. Oh, why is that? Honestly, for the majority of my life, it has had no interest to me. Okay. What do you remember about money when you were a kid? My father worked 70 hours, you know, 65 hours a week. I saw him in the mornings, but I never saw him in the evenings. My mom was always worried about money. Money, 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 money. Whether she wanted to buy something or she wasn't able to buy something or the bills. Uh, I had a, a wonderful upbringing, but money... You know, she would cry a couple times a month about this or about that. And it was just always about money. And, and she, you know, she, uh, an, another thing is keeping up with the Joneses, you know, having, you know, just having it all, or at least looking like you had it all was very, 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 very important to her. Another thing that I know has shaped me in my adulthood. Honestly, when I, you know, was 17, I, I, I just was like, fuck money, man. Like, I'm not even going to care about this at all i was proud of it i'd go live in the woods for for months not oh, he's with one other of people, those. you know and and we camp and we i travel i'd work for six i like people who want to live in the woods and <laughs> why, are you, why are you laughing there are people who want to live in the woods and i wanted to live in the woods at one point <laughs> you know it's the idea of the <laughs> why are you laughing? the idea of the simple life <laughs> yeah so um i get it and these especially guys who want to do that they are very proud of it they're like i ain't gonna be taken down by the man i don't listen to the man you know i'm counter authoritarian or i don't know so um, I can totally see that. You know, he learned how to work with his hands. And yeah, I can build my own house. I can build my own vehicles, you know. Six months and then travel for six months. I'd farm for six months. And then I would go live in Tennessee for six months and, and, and all over the country. And picking cherries in Canada and, you know, growing avocados in California. And money was just, it. it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I had $7 or $70. And that's really all I had. Until I was about thirty-eight. Woo! No joke. Woo! So, oh, I forgot if they're about the same age. I don't think he told us their age, but I'm assuming she met him, and yeah, she met him when she was twenty-five. So I'm assuming he was also in his twenties. When he was a hippie, but that's no longer sexy. Yeah, well, yeah, it's not. It, he, I don't know if y'all could hear him. He's like. Yeah, she met him when he was a hippie, but it's no longer sexy, for sure. And I'm like, yeah, I just wonder what she was thinking about when she, like, married him, you know? I dated a hippie. Um, and I absolutely had no intention uh, of marrying him at all. Uh, so, yeah, I wonder what her... I wonder if her priorities changed or, you know, what happened. Wow. Like what it, was, it was that much. I made, I made, um, I wanted a little bit more. Uh, I was farming and I was tired. I was tired of working so hard and not having any money in the bank. Hmm. You know, one, one year I added up all of my hours 
and how much I was bringing in. And I was making like $4 and 70 cents mm. because I was getting paid a, a salary. Mm. And it just was, uh, you know, so I tried to stop farming and it, it took me five years. I just kept on doing, it. I knew how to do it. I could do it with my eyes closed. I did a good job. I loved it too. I'm out in nature. Uh, I'm growing money. beautiful food. People are happy. I'm, you know, feeding families. But when I decided to be become a carpenter is when I said, okay, I can start making some changes now. So Melody has helped me, you know, helped me shift. Money didn't really matter. And now it has started to matter. And that is a brand new, scary feeling for me. I understand. Uh, I just got to say, what a fascinating life. It was an yeah, amazing life. I bet. And so when you saw your mom treating money that way, being stressed out by money that way, trying to keep up with the Joneses that way. You interpreted certain feelings about money. When you feel that today, that same feeling about money, what do you do? <sighs> uh, don't, don't talk about it. Don't think about it. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Delete. Um, make it unimportant. Yeah, not really thinking about it in, in depth. And how about when Melody brings it up with you? What do you do in that context? Well, I usually just ask if we can talk about it later. I, I push it to the side. It makes me very uncomfortable. David grew up hating money. He said his mom constantly worried about money, money, money. Notice his reaction. Some people in his situation become obsessed with the pursuit of money. Yeah. Others simply absorb their parents' lessons and carry on that generational habit of constantly worrying about money. But David did something different. He totally rejected it. He even transformed his rejection of money into a virtue. He said, fuck money, man, and stopped caring about it entirely. He, went he was proud of that. Club that can work for whatever. a while. But it gets harder when you get older. And it becomes really hard when you get into a relationship with someone else who almost certainly expects you to care about money. Melody, I'm curious about your perspective here. First of all, I just have to understand what's going on in your background because it looks really cool. So mm -hmm. can, can you tell me about this property? I've heard you mention land. Where do you both live? What is the scenario that you're living in right now? Sure. Um, about six years ago, we moved to the home that we bought about 18 months ago. Um, we moved here as renters and we fell in love with the property. It's a 1920s farmhouse and it's gorgeous. And it's on 10 acres. Um, I'm in agriculture. David was in agriculture. So having our own land okay. is something, you know, for over a decade that we've both had a goal of. We're trying to create a natural swimming pool um, out of a stock tank that we have. And we've been, you know, really trimming back the trees and putting in uh, uh, certain elements that help with algae and fungus and or, or, uh, plant life, adding additional vegetation. And as we have been doing different things in the house, we found all of these really cool walls behind all the drywall. So that's what the behind this is for. Uh, it's the original walls that were built in the house in 1928. Um, so they pieced cool. all of these different woods together that were repurposed in different colors. And it's been really fun unveiling the real bones of the home and kind of letting it return to its its original glory. Wow. Why are you making well, that it's beautiful face? and it's clear Thanks. you both enjoy it. You know, the- What's that face? No, tell me. <laughs> That's just really uh, too hippie for me. Uh, <laughs> oh, too much for you. Improvements you're making to the land, to the property. Do you both plan to continue living here for the foreseeable future? Um, definitely. We've purchased uh, with that mindset. Um, mm -hmm. We're close to Austin, and this is our home. Like, we love Central Texas. Okay, got it. So on this property, I understand you have some people renting, uh, you got an apartment upstairs, you got an Airstream outside. How many different renters do you have? Four. Four, fantastic, okay. First of all, that's awesome. And yeah. I understand that they're covering all the expenses plus utilities, is that correct? Bro, you have land and like you just buy an RV and people just like live in it and pay you rent to live in an RV. <laughs> I know you would never do that. Like, and they live in a place where you can find people who would do that. Like, here in Dallas, you will not find people are not going to live in an RV. Like, they're not going to pay you money to live in an RV. But out there in Austin, I I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
How do you both feel about that? Fantastic. That's cool. You got this big piece of land. Multiple people can live there. You've got your financial win. It's a win, win, win for everybody. This yeah. is awesome. Okay. Yeah. So big win. I'm going to take the win on that. For many, many years, we've convinced ourselves that financially we are separate. Hmm. Um, you have to. That, I don't think that real in reality, there's any way that we are. Because um, you're married. <laughs> wait a minute. It just. It's, are you financially separate or together? We're. We don't have any combined finances, but either I cover a lot of things or I feel like it's really complicated. I mean, there's just not a way that you can build a life with someone and actually have everything totally separate. Okay. Right. Who owns the house? I do. Okay. Um, who pays the expenses for the house? She does. Some are split, but mostly, and David would probably have a different answer, but I feel like I do. Okay. I'll come to David too. David, I want to hear your perspective on this. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, He's defensive, right? Uh, who has a higher income? I do. She does. What are the other things where it's complicated? David doesn't see the impact that me covering groceries has. Like just that number alone. Like, Why doesn't he see the impact? What? Really what? Um, I mean, it, I don't know. It feels so petty. Honestly, but <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> this guy, <laughs> he's like, got like a, that gif with uh, Michael Jackson eating popcorn vibes. Oh, oh, yeah, like he's so dissociated, like. He's acting like he's just watching the movie or something like. <laughs> mm. If we were 50, 50 or even split, like that would make up the difference that I'm paying for no, or not paying into an IRA. Um, but then like I'm doing that because I know he, he doesn't have it. So it feels really shitty of me to like ask him to cover the food when I've got the income for it. So it's not really about the groceries. What is it about? So there's no plan. There's no, there's no unity. There's no, there's no vision. Like, Mel, you look at me. Yeah. Let's try it again. It's not about the groceries. I believe you and I hear you. What is it about for you? Why are we here? It's, so unstable like it's unstable means what you there's no security the like yeah. there's no savings there's no you know it's always like get something and then owe for it and that's been something i've been on board for too but i'm i'm done <laughs> I'm, I'm done with that sense of owing or like the stress of like a car repair or our dog is getting surgery tomorrow like we have i believe that we have the math that we have the numbers to make this work mm. i mean we're in a really amazing position like we have renters on this property and like our mortgage is completely covered plus our, our utilities like we have a very low cost of living and i have a decent salary i'm not satisfied with it but it, it's not like on paper, this doesn't work, but it's not working. All right. <laughs> I hear you. David. I feel like this is such a web to untangle, like how to untangle this web. Like we're trying to see like what the heck is actually fucking happening here. You know, like. Mm -hmm, yeah. Let's start with the expenses. Were there any expenses that you pay for that <laughs> Melody didn't mention? Uh, I buy the dog food, and we buy really good dog food. Um, mm. What else? Expenses, expenses. Mm. Uh, I do the majority of the car repairs, um, which has, in the past, saved us you know, thousands of dollars. No, expenses. Bro, the... he's talking about the things that he's doing with his hands, 
Like he he's saying he fixes the car. Meaning, oh, because you, we didn't have to pay to get the car fixed, he's counting that as a financial contribution. Is that what he asked? No, Ramit asked him, what does he, what do you pay? Okay. Yeah, so he's saying that he paid for the parts and stuff for the car, I think, right? It sounded like he he's talking about just the fact that he fixes the car. And he pays for really good dog food. Those are, those are the two. <laughs> um, minus, I think I spend 50 to to $100 a month on general, you know, light bulbs, air filters, whatever. Excuse me? Stuff that, that goes towards this, the house. No, no, no. This man is so defensive. He's very defensive. <laughs> because... She's talking about that she's paying, uh, she pays most of the bills and she buys all the groceries and he's like, nope, I buy the dog food and I spend like 50 to a hundred dollars a month. Well, also remember all of their expenses, mortgage, utilities are all covered. So basically it sounds like she's paying groceries and he's paying dog food and car repairs and miscellaneous stuff so maybe that might actually be equal he's not <laughs> he's not paying no car repairs he's doing the car repair to buy the car parts to repair the car oh. you can fix a car without <laughs> buying a new part yes oh, yeah. you can just fix Imagine. it just fix it yeah, yeah. <laughs> i do not be, i do not I don't believe he's buying car parts. <laughs> okay. Uh, but like you said, we don't have a lot of expenses. Yeah. So from her comment about it works on paper, do you agree that it works on paper, your finances? For me, I'm in this, this spot where I'm constantly thinking about my debt. Or I am in debt. But I'm also, I also feel like I'm in the best position I've ever been in my entire life. You probably with are. Money. <laughs> this goes out crazy. Like and in, in, in to make more money. How are you in the best position you've ever been in with money? Well, I started working for myself. I'm a hard worker and a great learner. I see my potential. She's upset. she's upset because she owns the house and these tenants, she's counting that as her income. So she is viewing all of the expenses that are paid as like her income. Ah, okay. Okay, that's the problem. I guarantee that's not how he sees it. <laughs> yeah. Potential. Well, only recently, you know. When I started the business, I didn't see the potential that I see today. Um, how am I in a better position? Well, I'm making, you know, I'm making more money than I've ever made, you know, so that's uh, uplifting to me. We own our home. We both, but me. <laughs> a whole well, too said, excuse you, she owns the home. <laughs> a lot as well know how to make money from our land and our home. Um, so I, I see home. that as, as a big opportunity that we're taking um, and also adds to our, you know, financial freedom. I mean, all that sounds pretty positive. You're making more than you ever made. You are making money from renters, et cetera. Awesome. All that is great. If you are now making more money than you've ever made before, why is the debt still growing? Because I'm spending the money. When does the debt get paid off? Well, here's the deal with my money. I either have $50 or I have $5,000. Her face right here. And that's how it is for me. David is one of those guys who loves assigning himself an identity. Mm -hmm. He says, I'm in a better financial position than I've ever been in before. He also says, here's the deal. I either have 50 bucks or 5,000. That's how it is for that's me. That's just who I am. I think we've all met people like this. Yeah. Previous guests have said things like, well, and they're always older. Okay. I don't know if it's because we're younger, but every person I've met like that so far in my life that I can remember has been an older person. Have you met people like that? No. No. Oh, well. 
just bad with math, or I'm just a blue collar guy, or well, I am an engineer. People who give themselves these labels really think they're being clever. And usually they say these lines in a charming way, and you'll notice they almost wait for the inevitable applause. But when I see phrases like this, these self-assigned identities, I start to get suspicious. The people who have these charming off-the-cuff answers almost always use them as a shield against their actual money issues. I'm going to call David on it. You had this yes. real cutesy phrase, I'm either 50 or 5,000. Nice phrase. But what I want to know is, when does the debt get paid off? I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to know? I'd love, I'd love, yeah. <laughs> this, guy. this guy is so unserious. He is not serious. <laughs> really? Well, I do know. I can answer that question myself. When I make and implement a plan. Oh, God and stick with it to pay off my debt. What's stopping you from that? I'm afraid of not doing it. Do you mean that if you create a plan? But you're not doing it now. <laughs> okay. You don't trust yourself that you will follow through with it. That is 100% correct. In your head, do you tell yourself like, I'll just pay the minimum and I'll deal with this at some point in the future? Okay. He's nodding. My loan is set up to just automatically take out. Um, and I actually have made 2000 extra dollars worth of payments this year. It's a three year loan. And I, I want to, I had set a goal that it would be uh, paid in two years and I'm, I am keeping that goal. Okay. That's impressive. Did you know about that melody? No. I mean that face. Okay. So it sounds like 13, he's calling it a minimum, but 1300 just puts him on pace so that it's fully paid by three years. Okay, that makes more sense. Hmm. What does it feel like to hear that? It feels like two years at 26% interest is a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. But what about the fact that he paid an extra 2,000 bucks? That's awesome. Okay. It, is it enough for you? Yeah, it's not enough for her. It's like too little too late. Mm. No. Just say no. I don't really feel like I have a choice about whether it's enough for me. Like I did. Well, you're married. Yeah. You of all people get to have a say. <laughs> um I mean, I guess in that it's not an emphatic guess, it's a no. Like I want it to be more. I want that that to be gone tomorrow, yesterday. Hmm. I want to stop giving money to these credit card companies. I you know, like in just interest. Okay. Can we just talk about the numbers for a minute? Yeah. You have this big property. You have renters covering your basic expenses. The way it breaks out is David has his own business. He's not paying rent. In fact, he's getting paid. Uh, Melody, you pick up uh, more of the expenses, things like groceries, things like that. Is that the facts or am I missing any key elements? I think one key element that, that you're missing is that, you know, maintaining our hundred year old home and four rental properties on our on our 10 acres, the 10 acres itself takes up a lot of my time and energy and money. Okay. Okay. Maybe he buys parts. <laughs> you're talking about maintaining this property. I can't even begin to imagine mm -hmm. how much time and effort it takes to maintain uh, 1920s property, 100-year-old property, how much would it cost ballpark if you were to pay others to do what you do, David? Um, I'd say 
five to ten thousand dollars a year minimum? That's a good question. How much would it cost to just get somebody to come out there and mow the lawns? I don't think. Uh, I'd say three hundred a visit. Three hundred, and you do that what once every? You know, about once a week. Once now, a week, and you like this? Uh, I, I'd say three times a month. This sounds like hell. Well, this is why we all have our own rich life. This is you're what out they there, like. Yep. You know, I assume you got one want. of those riding mowers <laughs> and you're just like in your own world. Listen to this for me. My favorite thing to say to people is that I spent five times as more money on my mower than I did on any car I've ever owned. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So you're out there roughly three times a month. Melody, if you think that it would cost roughly 300 bucks each time to have someone come and do it. I can't, I can't deal with him eating. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> uh, That's like 900 bucks a month just for mowing the lawn. If we're just doing dollars for labor, he's probably doing at least $2,000 a month worth of labor. Would that be fair? Yes. Sure. All right. She don't, Look, get, she don't give a damn. She don't give a damn. She just wants to see them doll hairs. Okay, if it's not making money, it's not making sense. Okay, that's what she just said. Don't hold anybody to these numbers. I actually hate when <laughs> couples try to assign dollar values to every single thing. They, oh, well, I empty the dishwasher. Well, I do this. Uh, what's the dollar value? I go, we've taken a real wrong turn somewhere if we're calculating how much it costs to wash the dishes at night. But <laughs> I'm just trying to understand, like, really general, because David doesn't pay any money towards the mortgage. That's a big red flag for me. And I'm trying to understand why. Now I understand. David is effectively property manager. Yeah, he puts a lot of sweat, labor, equity into the whole equation. Cool. Well, then uh, my question is answered. Perfect. And Melody, you feel good about that? Is that accurate to say? Yeah, I think his schedule allows for it, his skill set, his enjoyment level, all of those things kind of align for that to work out. And Cool. Yeah. David, have you looked at this conscious spending plan? No. I have. Oh, okay. Really? <laughs> I'm surprised. Okay, I thought I was being mean. I thought I was being mean, but it makes me feel better that even Ramit is surprised. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, did you do it? Did you do it together? We did. We did it together. Oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah, good job, y'all. Pleasantly surprised. Me too. I'm extremely pleasantly surprised. This is amazing. <laughs> you know how many people don't do it together when the only instructions are do it together? This is awesome. Well, I've done one by myself prior. It was the first time I've seen David's expenses kind of line item and, and it was surprising um i think something that i'm still really confused about is we talk a lot about how much less david makes than me um and i'm still don't know if that's accurate i still think that there's not a lot of um clarity on how much david makes but he makes closer to what i do than i expected oh so that's really shocking what's the implication I thought he made half as much as I do or less. Like I thought that we had much more disparaging incomes. Uh, okay. And, and turns out your incomes are closer than you thought. Therefore, what was the end of that sentence? Where's all the money going? Well, let's take a look. That's okay. what she wanted to know. Your assets she, are 490 Like I said, she said, if it's not making money, if she is not seeing that money, it's not making sense. dollars Your investments are $95,000. Those are yours, Melody. David, do you have any investments? No. no. All right. Your savings are $1,600 and your debt is $398,000, although that includes, to break that number down, $365K of a mortgage. Melody, you've got $5K of credit card debt. David, $22,000 of credit card debt. And then David, you've got a personal loan of $6,000. What's that 6K loan? The, that's the loan that I took out at the beginning of the year. For what? Is that in addition to your 22K credit card debt? Yes. Okay. Oh, so you have 28,000. Okay. All right. Okay. And in your case, you have multiple renters. Therefore, you are breaking even or potentially profiting modestly every single month. Right? Correct. Yeah. All right. David, I, I don't think anybody's expecting you to double your income overnight. But I guess the question is, what's your plan? Tell her what you know and tell her what you don't know. It's totally okay not to know everything about money. Well, what, I what do you mean? Like, did this skip? Like, weren't they talking about, like, expenses? Yeah, now they jump to something else. Did they just skip over 
address the expenses. <laughs> so, like, spending the money on hookers? <laughs> like, what's going on here? <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I, I just want to see it. I want, I'm waiting for him to put it up on the screen. Right. What I, what I know is... Well, what I don't know is is really how much money I make. What I do know is that I'm I'm confident in my business growing and me getting there. Mm, getting where? You and don't even I'll know how back, much you make you know, now. What I don't know is the best way for me to go about doing it. Doing what? Are you like one of those guys who doesn't yeah. even invoice his customers and they don't even end up paying you for like no, nine I, months at a time? No, not at all. I, I actually pay $6 a month for a badass invoice uh, app. Okay. And I send them professional apps and my good clients job. are amazing and they all pay me right on time. So so yeah, what, when you say I'm not good with money or I don't pay attention to money in my business, what do you mean by that? Well, so when, when, I, when I give a bid to my clients... I, I'm real good at, at looking and, and find and, and deciding how much wood it's going to take, how many, how much time it's going to take, you know, how many days it's going to take, and I give them a quote and I, I add ten percent. But I always end up going to the store at the end of the job to get a few more boards or another box of screws or, or it's taken me f four or five days longer. Uh, now I get paid by the job, not by the day or hour, so it doesn't affect the client. But at the end of it, honestly, I'm just so tired and over it and and also excited to have the project done that i don't go back and and, and look at the finer details and see okay did i if this job cost the client seven thousand dollars how much did i make here well do you want to do that right now it, it, uh yeah it's kind of important yes otherwise why are you in business if you're in business to lose money that I sounds agree. like a bad business to me i'm not in the business to lose money all right so how do we figure out how much you made on your last job um, I would, I would go and look at all my receipts and then add them up and <laughs> look at how much was left over. Mm, all right. So let's say you build a client $10,000. That's how much they paid. You would go and look at all your receipts. What do you think it's going to tell you? How much I sit on supplies in order to build the deck. Yeah. So let's say you spent uh, $8,000. How much did you make? Mm -hmm. $2,000. Uh-huh. What about the gas to get to the project? What about the insurance that you already have to pay divided by 365 days multiplied by the number of days for your client? What about the returns? What about this? What about that? What about all that? Well, I forgot all about that. I've basically just been paying my bills, putting my head down, trying to get jobs, going to work, doing an awesome job. <laughs> okay, what I'm surprised about is that his wife has not interfered. I'm surprised about that. And maybe it's just my personality, but... If my husband, while well, you're here, if you, <laughs> if you were really good at doing wood making, is that, is that what it's called? <laughs> if you are a very good wood making person, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like worried about money and you have this big debt, 100% I am going in your stuff. And I'm looking at all this stuff, and I would have told you what Ramit said. I would have told you all that, and I would make up new new prices for you and open the accounts. I would do all, <laughs> I would do all of that, and I'll be like, "Look, just do it, <laughs> and I will." He, make sure see what money goes in the bank account so the fact that she hasn't done that is interesting to me she said that they're keeping things separate and i wonder why like i'm not saying it's her responsibility um 
But I wonder why she was not inclined to jump in. Paying for a couple things here and there, maintaining the property. And I haven't dedicated time and effort to, to growing my business in, in the, the, the side that helps me make money just as much as the physicalness of it all. Yeah. So if you were to now zoom out and look at all those answers you just gave me, almost as a scientist, what do you think is going on? Mm. <laughs> I'm a... uh, maybe I'm avoiding um, the reality of my money. Or... Okay. That's for sure. <laughs> That's, <laughs> yes. I can tell you yes right now. That's one. What else? Um... Oh, I'm probably avoiding having to do something different. Okay, like what? I, well, I can make the changes that I that that um, that we've been talking about and that I want to make. Yeah, yeah, I've wanted to make the changes for a while. Yeah, yeah, feels um, disempowering. Like you have no agency. It feels helpless. And the confusing part is, why can't I do this? You know, if I'm you, I'm saying I can fix engines, I can build decks, I build furniture, I can mow a 10 acre lawn, I could do all this crazy stuff, which by the way, I can't even do. I don't know how to do any of that stuff. Why can't I seem to do this? What the heck? <laughs> Here's my guess. So just back of the napkin, without even looking at your books, my guess is you're probably breaking even or losing money. If that is true, what does it mean to you? If that is true, it means I need to make a change. You, he's been saying what? that. He's been saying that. I, I want. I want. Rem, what do? What does Ramit need to say so we can get beyond that? I don't know what to call it—a pullover word or whatever phrase. Why do you need to make a change, though? Uh, um, because I think with with having that knowledge. With understanding it better, I'd be able to make the changes that I need to make in order to uh, make more money. Melody? What's the first thing that comes to your mind right now? There's still no plan in that. Right. Like, this guy for the last hour <laughs> is just saying over and over in just different fonts. I need to make a change. Something's got to change. Yeah, I got to do something. Yeah, when I make a plan. Like, let, let's get to step two, please. Yeah. Like, David, the comparison that I would make is like, I have a goal of how much I want to make this year. And so I asked for a raise and that's going to be part of it. And I have some steps that I can take to increase my income outside of what I can make for my employer. I have a plan to, to get to my goal. And I think, and, and I don't want to tell you what your plan should be, but I think potentially it starts with, I'm going to figure out what the cost of my jobs are. And I'm going to seek out clients to give me to, to secure the highest netting jobs. And I'm going to get six of those in the first X amount of months in order to do that. Yeah, that puts your neck on the line, but it tells you what you need to work for in order to be able to accomplish the goal of paying off the debt. David? I'll be honest, like, I just got, like, big feelings of anxiety just listening to Melody say that. It... I know. I don't know if this guy has ADHD or something, but, um, like, it's not, what she said is not helpful to him. If that was helpful, then he would have done it by now after how many years of marriage like it's very it's very obvious he needs help in that direction and you know i don't know I, I i don't know what her expectations are you know is she hoping he'll just magically change overnight or like like i'm just so curious as to why she has not investigated in what 
he needs, you know, there because he obviously needs something. And it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. If I make, you know, I think there's something about me where I struggle with making long distance plans because I'm, because, you know, I, I'm afraid of not completing the task. And it all, yeah, absolutely. I agree with, with exactly what you said. It sounds like a great plan, but honestly, I, don't, I can't even say it out loud. I'll be honest. I couldn't say that out loud. You couldn't say it out loud because what? I don't know if I can do it. And if you can't? Then I'd feel like a liar. Or... Interesting. How do you feel right now? Sick to my stomach. Avoidance really scares me. Mm. It scares me too. Do you remember what I told you on that money coaching call? That I needed to really think about what I needed in a relationship. Yeah. Because I don't mind someone having debt, a partner. People have debt and they have it for different reasons. Um, what matters to me is that they're open about it, that they can acknowledge why they have the debt. Might be a very good reason. Hey, I'm getting uh, my medical degree or something. But if somebody's not willing to talk about it, like really talk about it, that is a very big issue. I can't wait for us to be in a position to have an account together where, where it's an emergency fund and then there's a, a vacation fund and there's a home renovation fund. Um, and, and I can't wait to be adding into that. Um, as far as our money goes, though, like I've... There, there, it hasn't been, a, you know, something really big on my mind uh, until just lately. This is all a little new to me. Um, I definitely don't think about it as much as Melody, and, and we have different approaches towards talk to it her, as well. Talk to her. Don't talk to me. Uh, Melody, uh, I, I, you know, I'm not, babe. I'm really just not exactly sure what to say about about that <laughs> what what do you want with money? um what do i want with money i want well obviously i want to be debt free um i i want i want melody to feel taken care of and safe that is for myself if i could if i could have money in the bank and melody could see it that's that is for me there's this thing that men do where after a while you of being married you ask them what do you like to do they go whatever my wife likes ha 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 ha, ha. it's like a funny husband joke is it true it's actually not that funny no <laughs> he says no <laughs> Because a lot of men just lose themselves in their marriage. And that's why the only thing they do for fun is they have a man cave where they go and hide out. That's literally mm. all America teaches us that exists as pleasure for men is go hide from your family. Ha, 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 ha. And joke about it. So when you say all I want <laughs> is for Melody to be happy, that's actually not a great answer for no. me. What is it about men who give me this answer? At what age does the life get beaten out of you? And when I ask yeah. you the question, what do you want for yourself? That's... Is that how you feel? What? Like, men who do that, like, what happened to you? Like, what happened to your life? Yeah, I don't talk to those guys. Oh, you avoid them. Mmm, smart. <laughs> the answer invariably becomes, I just want my wife to be happy. What the fuck happens to almost every man to make him answer my question this way? I love that you love your wife, but I'm asking about you. I didn't even mention your wife. I'm a little alarmed because when I see lots of guys doing something, I'm humble enough to know that I might end up doing this too. Mm. God, if someone interviews me when I'm 65 and they- I would be scared. If I was a man, I would be so freaked out of that happening to me. <laughs> you said could never? Oh. Ask what I want with my life. And my answer is I just want my wife to be happy. That should be the end of me. No more interviews. DNR, it's over. 
<laughs> As I say this, I'm having a haunting realization about my own future. All right, um, back to David, I guess. It's hard for me to understand Melody's fear being so heightened by where I am right now. She is so... Can I tell you something, David? That's a hard thing for me to understand. Anxious of this. Sure. If I were your partner, I would be extremely worried, financially speaking. Yes. Why? Are you serious, dude? Did he just ask why? Because you have over $20,000 of debt and you don't have a plan to pay it off. You're paying the minimum. The amount itself is one thing, but the lack of urgency and of a plan really tells me that this is a deep issue, that we're not aligned. How can we get ahead if we're spending most of our time looking backwards? Next, the business. For you to grow it is amazing. For you to start a business alone is amazing. To grow it, incredible. But to not know the basic financial part of it, it's uh, incredibly concerning. You, you're all 40, 45. The amount you have in investments is small. Your savings is less than $2,000. So you live in a place cry? with heavy maintenance requirements. I would be extremely concerned. Does that help you understand going? Melody's fears? <laughs> Yes, it does. Well, let me ask you this. If you did not make a change, and you kept mm. going the way you've been going, what do you think would happen? I would give up on my business and I would go work for somebody else. I yeah. don't believe you that. Get a every two weeks. I don't believe that. One year. Okay. What about in your relationship? What would happen? I think that it would create a lot of distance between us. The position that you're in is one that you already don't like talking about very much, which means that a lot of other things we can't talk about that are even closely related to that. And that the bigger that becomes, the bigger that divide comes, the bigger the separation between us. If it's not us growing closer together. What are the things that we can't talk about? The money, money. stuff? Like, yeah. what about it? Um, uh, ideas for ways David could um, make more money or pay off his debt. I talk about my money, but we don't talk about our money. Do you have our money together? No. no. It, that's, I think that's part of the problem is that we have this life together, but we don't have the vehicle to like move forward. Okay. What surprises you out of the things that I just said? Nothing. Nothing surprises. It's just not the way I look at the world and the things and the way I walk through my life. And it's a challenge for, for me to, to see it in other people's perspectives. Life, I think that's cool. Reinvention is always amazing. I can see why it's difficult. I can see why it's difficult for you. And I can see why it's difficult for Melody. Mm -hmm. Because those habits you picked up, e even the offhand phrases you say, I didn't care if I had $7 or $70. And you lived that for decades. And so to now live in one place, with expenses that are both fixed and variable, and then to have a partner who has a different perspective on money, that's just a lot of stuff coming at you in a different way. Mm -hmm. I think I compare it a lot to ways that I've dealt with things in my own life. They're not money related, but like comparing my parents' relationship and some rules that I made for myself um, about relying on other people and being wildly depend independent. And, um, you know, at one point I, I realized that if that by trying not to relive my, my mom's experience and her relationships, that I was actually creating that in mind and how much and how hurtful that was for David. And I compare this issue a lot to that. So I had to really like let down a lot of walls and it's still work that I do constantly to like recognize like, oh, I'm refusing to let David in and not emotionally being present or, you know, those different types of things because I, I don't want David to have a partner like that. Okay. And when it relates to money, specifically like if you were to tell me on the conscious spending plan this is what i want to change what would you tell me i want us to make more money invest more money and save more money <laughs> okay <laughs> david laughs you david, laughing? your thoughts well, i mean I, I knew the answer i knew what her answer was going to be that it was going to be all across the board which is which is what we want to do she shuts him out but why are you to laughing avoid her parents dynamic and then immediately repeats his parents dynamic without even knowing it it's pretty fascinating and as i was going through this part of the conversation with them they told me something that totally caught me by surprise. We've also talked about wanting to get legally married. Oh, what? Which is something... Excuse me? You're not married. Well, oh. we had a wedding and we forgot to get our officiant to sign the paperwork. And he does not live in, near us. And so... Correction. 
What? The officiant did sign the paperwork. We never oh. turned in the paperwork. We still have it here. I didn't know that. Well, <laughs> either way, our paperwork didn't get filed. And so while we had a wedding and went through all of that, we didn't submit any of that paperwork and we're not legally married. Oh, okay. First okay. of all, that's very interesting. But how does that fit into our conversation today? Well, I mean, it's something that we'd like to do. Um, then do it. Huh? And I haven't felt comfortable doing with the financial position that we're in. And with, like, if we got married, I would take on the debt. And I worked really hard. I see. Like, I don't think I knew this then, but now I'm more aware. And without being able to talk about money, without being able to have collaboration and, and with the avoidance around money that we have in our relationship, I don't feel like we should be legally binding ourselves to each other. I guess she, no I guess that was uh, like luck that they never turned in that paperwork. Cause now she's like, oh, I don't even know if I want us to be married. Has she had they turned in that paperwork that that would be her debt? Hmm. David? Well, that just breaks my heart. And I'm, that's all I have to say about that. You hear stories about people not proposing to their partner or not getting married because deep down they know it would be the wrong decision. I've heard it, but I've never actually talked to someone in one of these situations. To me, <laughs> hearing Melody admit that's what's happening here is totally blowing my mind. And I'll tell you, for me, I don't mind a partner having debt. The amount matters, though, and the type of debt matters, and the reason they have debt matters. Most of all, what they've done to pay off the debt matters. Is she right to be worried? <laughs> no, uh, yeah, sure, of course. But... I'm starting a business. It, it's it's not perfect, you know. I, I've doubled my 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 jobs every year. I see that as a success. Melody has helped me. She's helped me shift. Money didn't really matter, and now it has started to matter. And that is a brand new, scary feeling for me. I have a couple things I would point out. My wife is an entrepreneur as well. I'm an entrepreneur. It's hard to be an entrepreneur. It's stressful and it's tumultuous, and you can't do anything but just go through it. That's what you got to do as an entrepreneur and as the partner of an entrepreneur. Gosh, it just feels like you have this amazing opportunity with this land you've got and the renters and all this stuff that I, I honestly rarely hear the situation you've got. It just feels like a waste to go through the next 10 years of life arguing over like $300 expenses here and there. It just feels like it doesn't make sense to me. It feels like there's so much more that is possible. I think that the two of you lack a common language with money, but you've got something now that you didn't have then, and that is a partner. And a partnership is about more than just doing it your way. Yeah, David. And I might not have filed paperwork, but we are married. Like he, he's my partner in life and I've chosen him no matter what the outcome of this is. So there's no, like our relationship is on the line conversation happening here. Like, for me in my mind, it almost shifts from what I need to what I want. And I want more for us. More? Yeah, I want more closeness and alignment and fun and joy and celebration and creativity and passion. Why waste it? Why should we wait to have any of those things? And that's what I want in this relationship. And in this life. But I think as long as we keep avoiding what's right in front of us, mm. that time is running out. Mm. Do you agree with that, David? The time is running out? No. Melody, like, you're talking like we're 90 years old or that, or, or that, I mean, you brought up time is running out. I feel like it's just beginning <laughs> is how I feel. That's the struggle. When I hear you say time is running out, I think, what? It has just begun. Now, I are, are you curious or are you explaining your perspective right now? Oh, mm. oh, I'm definitely explaining my perspective. Maybe part of restarting the way you talk about money is for both of you to get curious, especially you, David. How often do you ask Melody questions about money? Never. Mm. Zero? Yeah, I haven't heard you ask once. <laughs> Maybe you can just laugh. Did you ever see your dad asking your mom <laughs> questions about money? No. Hmm, I wonder. That's interesting. Have you ever seen a man ask a woman questions about money? I haven't paid attention if they were. No, that's an honest answer. This is simply not a figment of your reality. It's just not something you've ever encountered. And yet Melody is crying out for it. 
she wants to have a conversation. What was that word she said? She, it starts with a C that she wants the two of you to do together. What was that word? C O collaborate. 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 You, can't, you can't collaborate if one person's just explaining. So do you notice the dynamic here? Melody comes, brings up the topic, chases. David avoids, runs away. Then when Melody corners you, David, you, what do you do when your back is against the wall? Uh, defend myself. Yep. Yeah, defend, so. explain, deflect. Mm -hmm. But you never do one thing that could actually bring the walls down and allow you to connect. What would that thing be? Ask Melody why she feels like it's the end because it's just as hard and emotional for her to talk about as it is for me. Melody, Melody mm -hmm. what would it feel like if he asked you questions about money? I mean, it would be a complete change from where we currently are. I would feel like he was engaging with me. I would feel like we were both present. What else do you want to feel? What do you want to feel in your relationship with money? United. Mm. How does it feel right now? Isolated. Mm. What else do you want to feel in your relationship? Um, collaborative. Mm. What does it feel right now? Independent. Right? So she's actually telling you what she wants, but you have to be listening and you have to do what I'm doing, which is to say, oh, what do you mean by that? Collaborate means what? You can share your stories. I'm sure there's a million stories she's never even heard about you. That's the cool part about being together. I can change. I do change. I have changed big time. I have confidence that I, that I can do those things, but saying them is even harder than doing them sometimes. If I can actually say it and write it down and look at it and put it on a you know, big board outside in my shop or I feel like I could closer to the goal. I don't know. But David, you said you wanted to pay off your debt, but you're currently paying the minimum. Yeah, I know. So I don't think saying is the hard thing. Well, so I, this year I want to, when we, when we, once I went through all my records and found out that I was, you know, I actually brought in, you know, that, that, that clients gave me a, a large sum of money. And I thought to myself, well, where the heck did it go? You know, <laughs> That's why, what we're asking. why am I at zero every month? Why am I struggling? <laughs> Why haven't I been able to pay off any of this debt? Why did I accrue more debt this year? And what is the answer? That one, I'm not making any money, or two, I'm spending more money than I make. Well, which one is it? Well, I don't know. I wish I did. It's probably both. You know, our relationship with money as a team is, is <laughs> oh, just a few months old. Um, and I think what Melody is saying is this is a serious priority. Yeah, it's great I know, how I far agree. we've come but it's, she needs more. Yeah, well, I already knew that. Today's episode was messy. There is no clear rainbow at the end of the tunnel. And to me, that just represents life. That's reality. There's not always a perfect bow that we can tie at the end of a conversation about money. Sometimes it's just the beginning. What I really took away from this episode is that the way we think and feel about money profoundly affects our ability to enjoy it with a partner. Think about it. Melody and David are in a relatively enviable position. They have a big piece of land. Their expenses are covered by their tenants. He makes more than she initially thought. Technically, they should be thrilled, but all those deep held beliefs about money are coming up and the higher the stakes, meaning the older they get, the more surprise expenses they have, the more those feelings are coming from deep, deep inside. In fact, from their childhood, I asked Melody and David to follow up with me and here's what they told me. Melody said, my biggest takeaway from the call was that in order to move forward, we have to identify where our values align. It seems so obvious. David purchased the journal and we've been meeting every Sunday morning since taping. The journal has been a great tool for That's finding areas cute. we overlap and it has prompted discussions and action about ways we can make improvements and work together. Yay. I actually laugh cried after our first meeting and have physically felt so much lighter. Yay. David has been reading IWT and making extra payments on his debt by automatically sending 10% of everything as it comes in. He's been tracking expenses and time he spends on projects. Thankfully, David and I have a long history of successfully facing challenges and this is no different. Fantastic. Really thrilled to hear that melody. Now let's hear from David. I think my biggest takeaway was that I had no plan to get my credit down in a meaningful, healthy, and immediate way. I felt like I was doing all I could do, but after filling out my spending plan, it became clear I was able to make payments to get my balances down. After our meeting, I couldn't stop thinking about it and knew I had to make a change. I came up with sending 10% of every payment I received immediately towards my debt. Feels like a good plan is already working. What surprised me the most was how scared, frustrated, and hurt Melody had been feeling. I realized that Melody had been trying to talk to me and help me with my debt for years, and I had basically been ignoring her. I wasn't doing it on purpose, at least not consciously, but I was doing it and I didn't realize how much pain that was causing. Now I do. And now I will be a better and more open communicator when it comes to money. It's exciting. Yay. Well, that's about as good as it gets. To hear that David took responsibility for the way that he had been behaving and thinking and feeling about money is quite amazing. I want to thank Melody and David for coming on the podcast. I want to thank all of you for listening and watching and I will see you next week. Okay, let's
let's see the comments. Because that one was like all over the like it was just a circle 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 what do you say i still wish i had a clear <laughs> understanding of their expenses like where is the money going yeah i he didn't show us the money the their money thing maybe he felt like it wouldn't have helped like they filled it out together but the guy's still like i don't know where my money went uh okay. As long as you're not making money and yet he makes as much as the wife, I don't I don't get it. This person says something about this guy makes my skin crawl, <laughs> but my heart goes out to melody. Yeah, I have a similar opinion to him on money. I don't care for it enough for it to be a giant but WTF there's so many moments where I'm saying this guy's an idiot. <laughs> huh. She wants a provider, a partner, not a child she has to plan and care for. She carries all that burden, and he just lets her carry it. He feels like he's in the best position he's ever been in his entire life. Yeah, because his wife is doing all of the planning and fretting and stressing and making sure everything's covered. He's got it good. I feel so bad for her. She's doing her best not to nag. It's clear she genuinely cares for him and wants this to work. He seems clueless. <laughs> Not legally married equals free. <laughs> Go, girl. That man is an iceberg. And his nonchalant attitude, the calm waters that will sink your ship. Hmm. That's, what did she say? They really hit me in the gut. Melody is married to a man who probably never worked a regular job, right? Has no social security coming to him. Oh, yeah, that's another good point. He d probably has no social security. Uh, has no retirement savings. Nope. And will have to work until he dies. Yeah. I don't know what the solution is for this highly financially incompatible couple. Melody's fears that her husband is going to take her down with him. Yeah. Hmm. If this debt is paid off, I can see him taking advantage of credit line once again. Yeah, I would uh take his credit cards. If I were her, I would just take. I would just. I would steal them. I would. He will never find them again, and I know he's not going to call and get new cards. Wow, 90% of her meets episodes make me so grateful I'm single. No manipulation, no drama, just me securing my future and enjoying myself. No complaints here. Wow. <laughs> Girl, run. <laughs> oh. It's like nobody in the comments has a solution. Of course David is happy with where he's at, there are no natural consequences to his actions. Melody always takes care of it. The scary part is that if anything were to happen to Melody, they are both in a not so good position. That being said, I hope he continues to make positive progress. I'm impressed that he even made a plan. I'm impressed that he even figured out to put automatically 10% away. It very much looked like a mother with her child relationship. He doesn't seem to want, I was wondering, I wanted to say if he has like Peter Pan syndrome. What do you think? Um, I'm not sure I know what that is, but it just seems like he was a hippie for all of his life and now he's adapting to be a, a, like a real human. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine having Ramit on a video call giving you one-on-one -on -one advice and you decide it's time to yell <laughs> i don't know <laughs> well throwing your hands up like a six-year-old david should not be in business for himself he needs to work for someone let melody take that's what i'm saying she should be she should run his business and just let him do it and she run the business <laughs> <laughs> oh which one she 
Yeah, she married a hippie. That's all. Yeah. That's uh, Walter says, that's, that's all it is. She married a hippie. Being with a hippie is really fun in your teens and 20s. It is. It is. But then you want stuff like a house, kids, vacations to retire, not penniless. And unless both people are hippies, that's just not going to work out for one of them in the end. Yeah. And I actually know a hippie couple. I'm glad they got married. And they're very happy because they're both hippies. So it works. But no, it could not be me. Oh, this person says he's a user. Hippies do not do save and invest. I know hippies worth mi multiple millions. I love my hippie friends. Hmm. He's not an endearing hippie, unfortunately. Yeah. Oh, my ex-husband kept being told that's it when giving estimates. I encouraged him to bump them up to 25% across the board since he had a 10 more jobs than he could complete and he was in high demand. He didn't raise the bids for little old ladies, but other customers didn't even flinch when he raised them 25%. Like David, he was great at his trade, but horrible with money. Yeah, these I just think these type of people just need help. Like that, that's it. And if you can... If you have the mental space and time and energy to help, then just help. And I, I feel like it would be great. And now he's motivated. Like, it's interesting to me. Like, he was so defensive. He could not see how he was hurting hurting his fake wife. <laughs> but, yeah. Okay. That was an interesting one. So I think tomorrow we have another one somebody requested us to watch. So... Make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can be in the know of when we release that one. If you like this one, give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope you have been spamming as we've been watching this for an hour because I want to know your thoughts. Oh, it's not touch screen. What do you want to see? What's this one? Debt to nut and won't stop, huh? Stop being... Wait, let me just see the thing real quick. No, on here, here. Put your headphone on. I just want to see like his intro. What is that? She did her dance and she was like, "You want to fuck? Let's do it." So we in the club. And no that's where, way. Yeah, that's Wait, where, that's where, oh, let me slow it down. Way too fast. These people talk way much faster than those other people. She did her dance and she was like, "You want to fuck? Let's do it." So we in the club and no that's where. Way. Yeah, that's so I pay for my ex girlfriend's business. She doesn't talk to me. So what do I do? I go blow seven hundred <laughs> at the <laughs> bar. She has a boyfriend, so she's like not even answering my messages. So my oh, friend, uh -oh. my name is Jordan. I'm 31 years what, old. What I'm from kind Houston, of loser Texas, is this? And this is financial audit. <laughs> what do you do for a living in Houston? Wait, it's a good question. <laughs> Let me uh, see the comments real quick. What kind of a degenerate guy? As someone who also works. On the tech side of DOD, what's DOD? I have no idea. D that sounds like a gamer thing. Dungeon, no. D D DOD openly admitting to soliciting a prostitute in front of hundreds of thousands of people is insane. I don't know what DOD is, but literally a fireable offense. What is DOD? I don't know what that is. The fact this guy is making over a hundred thousand dollars a year and is still struggling financially is actually physically hard. What what is this guy? Something tells me he's told that stripper story many times, but this is the first time someone told him it was a prostitute. Okay, I seriously think Caleb purposely. No, he does. He intentionally has the most people who need help like people who are not all there like for real okay anyway that's all we have for today until next time much love much luck peace out bye